Conservatives are celebrating a huge win in Italy after Sunday's election. The right will have a dominant role in the country's parliament, and this woman, Georgia Maloney, will likely become Italy's first ever female prime minister. The thing is, she's also on course to become Italy's first far-right leader since Benito Mussolini himself. As we've told you on this show before, Maloney and her party, the neo-fascistic Brothers of Italy, are vehemently anti-immigration, have proposed a border wall-esque naval blockade to stop northern Africans from entering the country. She's even referred to immigration as, quote, ethnic substitution, branding it a threat to white natural-born Italians, echoing Tucker Carlson's beloved Great Replacement theory. Maloney also opposes adoption by same-sex couples, slammed Disney for potentially having gay characters in Frozen 2. Her party also has a history of limiting access to abortion. Oh, and here she is, as we've shown you before, on stage with her admirer, Steve Bannon. Yes, that Steve Bannon. And let's not forget that Maloney's party, the Brothers of Italy, is a direct descendant of Mussolini's National Fascist Party, which was banned in the wake of World War II. As fascism expert Ruth ben Ghiat points out in The Atlantic, women like Maloney are protected by patriarchy because they are often the first to support the fundamental pillars of male power and privilege. Maloney's party slogan, God, Fatherland, Family, celebrates those very pillars of power, and it came from Mussolini's dictatorship. Some worrying stuff there. But what will be the long-term consequences of this far-right win for Europe, for the West, for us in the United States? Joining me now, Ruth ben Ghiat. She's the author of Strong Men, From Mussolini to the Present, and publisher of Lucid, a newsletter on threats to democracy. She's also professor of history and Italian studies at NYU. Ruth, welcome back to the show. I've talked to you so many times on this show and other shows about Trump and fascism in America. And I always introduce you as an expert on Italy and Mussolini. How depressing that today I'm actually speaking with you about Mussolini and fascism in Italy. So what is your initial reaction to this Maloney Brothers party victory in Italy? I'm, I'm very sad uh, and I'm, I'm very uh, obviously concerned is an understatement because uh, of all the far right politicians, she is somebody whose lineage goes directly back to the neo-fascism and in fact, if you look at the logo of the party, um, she insisted that the tricolor flame be kept there in the logo when it was founded in 2012, because that was the logo of the neo-fascist party that she was a hardcore militant in. And so many, on so many issues, even like the great replacement theory, she calls ethnic substitution. She's actually way to the right of uh, some other people because there are people who feel that it's kind of, quote, natural demographic change that is bringing about more non-white babies or, than white yeah. and so threatening white. She believes that actually, she said many times, there's a plan or a design to actually, uh, by Soros and the EU, to a spark mass immigration that will erase and annul everything that she holds dear. So it's a real conspiracy theorist. Yeah. That's who's the prime minister now. And what's interesting is, you and I have had this discussion, and so many people have had this discussion in America, like, what do we call the Republican Party? What do we call Trumpism and MAGA? <laughs> Joe Biden used the phrase semi-fascism. And look, you can have a legitimate argument about how fascistic is the American right, what's the right label for authoritarianism in America. But this is Italy. This is where fascism began. This is a woman, as you say, who has a party that's kept the flag, kept the mottos. Uh, they've officially renounced fascism and Mussolini, and yet... Mussolini's granddaughter, I believe, is a member of the party, has run for office. She herself, um, Georgia Maloney, has praised the founder of her party, who's a former Mussolini cabinet member. I mean, the connections here to actual old school 1930s European fascism is pretty clear, is it not? It is. And I I'm, I'm, came out really hard in the Atlantic article and here because she is uh, tel telling people she's a conservative. And her party's a conservative. And it's part of this general whitewashing that's going on where Viktor Orban says he's in a liberal democracy. There's nothing democratic about Hungary today. And the GOP, the MAGA Republicans, are, keep calling themselves conservative. And she's very connected yeah. to uh, the GOP, by the way. You showed a picture of her with Bannon. 
she's been to CPAC, she's been to the National Prayer Breakfast, and she sees an alliance of, of interests and causes. Like she said, their battles are our battles. So we're going to see a lot more uh, interchange and connections there. Yeah. And so it's interesting you mentioned interconnections. For viewers watching here in America who think, why should I care what's happening in Italy? What will be the ramifications of this election victory, this new government in Italy, for the U.S.? Well, it, it further legitimizes the GOP's uh, turn to the right. And as you know, I consider the GOP a far-right authoritarian party that has to be classified alongside Orban's party, uh, other far-right parties. And so now we have Orban coming to CPAC. We're going to have Maloney coming to CPAC. And so it legitimizes the GOP as, as and puts it further into this kind of uh, transnational uh, new fascist uh, connection and world. And so that's, that's a big deal. Yeah. And while you were speaking there, we also saw alongside Maloney, Berlusconi. There's a person I thought I wouldn't see again for a long time. These uh, former right-wing leaders just won't go away. Um, one last question for you, Ruth. Kevin Roberts, the president of the Conservative Heritage Foundation here in the U.S., he tweeted, and I quote, if exit polls are right, then conservatives will come to power in Italy just weeks after conservatives in Sweden won. This can be a trend. Conservatives everywhere need to define the choice as what it is. Us versus them, everyday people versus globalist elites who've shown they hate us. I find this tweet fascinating on many levels. He refers to conservatives in Italy and Sweden. These are not just conservatives. This is the far right. And he talks about fighting the elites. This guy is a PhD academic who runs a multi-million dollar think tank in Washington, D.C. You are the elite, buddy. Uh, but what does that tell you about the American right? You mentioned Orban coming to CPAC. They've gone full on into right wing, far right European fascism. Yes, they have. And that, that's that. And and the more countries. So, you know, Hungary is a kind of a you could say a minor country. Nobody knows the, the language. And so it's been a big boon for Orban. But having Italy come into the same fold and I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot more uh, connections with uh, and closeness. Um, but this this line where he, the Heritage Foundation, they're saying they're conservatives, too. And so it's very important to come out and show how extreme these figures are, because uh, they're really trying to you know, pull the wool over people's eyes, having them think that this is conservatism. We will have to leave it there. Um, Ruth ben Giat, always a pleasure. Thank you for your time. Still to come, the devastation in Puerto Rico in the aftermath of Hurricane Fiona is now putting a spotlight on what's being done to combat hunger across the U.S. Jose Andres, the founder of Well Central Kitchen, along with the chair of the Congressional Hunger Center, Congressman Jim McGovern, they both join me after the break to talk Puerto Rico and to talk...